Good afternoon, VC. Mazzy here. I just got back from New York, and I know you saw my um, Fest for Beatles little, or some of you have, little mini tour thing. I went to work uh, in New York for a week. I go there a couple times a year, and uh, I met a friend of mine who lives in Jersey who went to the Fest for Beatles fans over the weekend, had some fun, geeked out a little bit. Kind of like going to a Trekkie convention, those kind of things, or a mini Comic Con. Uh, but I had a great time. I collect books, Beatle books. You know, that whole left section there are all uh, Beatle books, and this whole wall that I'm looking at right now, I think I got another dozen or so, and my buddy's gonna ship them to me. I'm not gonna showcase those, but I got that. I got a few records, and um, since I'm on the whole Beatle, I know there's a million Beatle presentations, I'm just gonna do a couple of things. First, first I'll show what I picked up at the Beatle Fest. The first non-Beatle thing, which is a really cool set, is um, the Zombies. The complete studio recordings and on vinyl and this came out just in january i believe and this copy is signed by four to the five members who on friday night uh, in new york got inducted in the rock and roll hall of fame i won't get into the politics of that whole thing but hey they deserve it as much as anyone in my opinion um if nothing else there's anyway there's rod argent colin blundstone again four out of the five i think the fourth guy the drummer's dead you know drummers always explode I don't know how that is but obviously if nothing else getting in for this saw them on a panel they're discussing all this and they started recording this the day after the Beatles started uh, finished Sgt. Pepper and uh, Jeff Emmerich who obviously was uh, an engineer with the Beatles from Revolver on in fact Revolver Tomorrow Never Knows was the first Beatles song that Jeff Emmerich worked on but Emmerich jumped in engineering this um, and it's such a beautiful record. You guys know it, it's a cult record. But the box also includes, you know, some, all the other studio output of the, of the zombies, including their singles and a few alternate things, or this album. And of course they're first with their first big hit, She's Not There and Tell Her No. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm just gonna showcase a few Beatle records since we're in the Beatle mood here, or I am on that roll, nothing really, um, not a definitive thing, not a whole section of something, but a couple of records. First, I'm gonna start off with a couple of German records that if you're really into the Beatles in terms of pressings and great sound quality and something, just things you should have for a lot of reasons, cover variations, but again, mainly for sound and pressings. Uh, two German records on Horzu, the German version of Magic Mystery Tour. A must because it, this is the first time everything is in stereo and it also has the uh, version of I'm the Walrus with the extra two bar intro uh, but beautiful sounding probably the best sounding version of Magic Music Tour you can get and if you can find this I know there's some boots going out now because I actually pick one up because was a, I love this pur purpley pinky cover and I think it was at Amoeba in uh, California in San Francisco that I uh, picked up one about a year ago, but it's definitely a boot. It was like 20, 25 bucks or something. But I, I just thought I'd have it. But I got a couple copies of the original one. This is probably early 70s, late 60s, or, but then I think I got mine in 70 or 71. And it sounds good, it sounds wonderful. Anyway, the other one, which a lot of people don't know about, I mean, it's around, if you're a Beatle collector, you know about it, D Beatles. This again is on Horzu, and basically this is the Please Please Me album. It's a stereo version in this case, and this sounds better than any Parlophone stereo version. Original, later pressings, anything. I have no idea why, if, if they got some master tape back in the day, and you can read about it, you can Google D Beatles on the Hoffman forums, other places. It sounds fucking amazing. When I got my new, um, uh, RP8 Riga turntable uh, about a year and a half ago. I put this on and it's stunning. I mean, you, you know the recording. It's, it's, uh, but it just sounded, it just bursts out of the speakers. This version kind of rocks out better. Um, there you go. But D Beatles, highly recommended. Again, it's not a cheap record to find. I mean, and probably well played. But my copy, I actually had two copies, one slightly different, but, um, it hasn't been played a lot, which is kind of great. So, so I remember during the 70s, especially when I worked in the record business, 
anytime there were a vari variation on import, it would come by the store, the stores I would frequent, I'd pick it up no matter what, sight unseen, and they'd be on the shelf for the last 40 years, pretty much. Um, another thing I'll show, is, isn't this not to fit, I'm not doing a definitive showing or a specific thing, but I thought about some of the Japanese uh, Beatle albums I have. Again, this is not all of them, but they did a, you know, the 70s, they put out, you know, the whole OB thing. And one thing I'm going to say, and I know someone else did uh, some Beatles stuff recently that just picked up some Japanese. Um, some of these are the EAS prefix. This one, yeah, can you see that? Anyway, EAS. I don't think they sound great. I have many co collector purposes, the OBs, Japanese presents, you know, the whole uh, thing about Japanese having these immaculate pressings. I, for some reason, it's probably the mastering more than the pressing. The EAS series, in my opinion, are not the Japanese ones to go to. If you can find the mono ones, even the ones that were on red vinyl, maybe in the 80s, whenever, the 70s or 80s, those are really good. I don't have those, unfortunately. But the EAS, are these all EAS? No, these are not all EAS. I think the better ones, these are EAS. I think the better ones are the APs, and they did, you know, American versions in some cases. Um, yeah, I got all the EAS things. I mean, I, you can go wild showing all this stuff. Um, it started in Liverpool, England. It started in Liverpool, England. If you know this album, you know what I'm saying. Uh-oh. We got a loose Obi on the loose. Obi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, I'm not one of these Obi freaks, and this is kind of ripped. I need to get, like, uh, box-sized uh, ceiling envelopes for those things. Uh, what else do I have to show? Um, maybe that's it for now. Again, all the other... This is all Beatles right here, so I could go wild. I could do a whole series. Um, I don't know. That's just it. I felt like posting something since I've been out uh, for a week. And uh, that's it. Mazzy is signing out. Happy Monday. Happy April Fool's Day. It's not an April Fool's edition. I'm not going to do that stuff. But um, get well, Mick Jagger. Bye.